back again, I guess. There we go. Okay, so where are we with capitalism? We're essentially, we're at the bottom of the curve, right? And it says crash and then it goes down to a new institutional arrangement, only that we don't really have a new institutional arrangement, which is something that characterizes capitalism today is that um, big capital doesn't really know where to go. It's clueless, it has no idea of the future um, and no direction uh, almost whatsoever. Uh, and this is not a new arrangement, it's something that happened many times before in history. Um, as you can see under the curve, we put up a parallel timeline uh, if you look at the crash of the 19th century industrial economy, um, uh, there's a dynamic that's very, very similar. Sometime in the late 19th century, you get the introduction of new technologies, combustion engines, and energy, electrical energy, uh, railways, mass communications, etc. This creates an enormous productivity increase. Uh, but the existing markets aren't really able to absorb the new productivity that comes out of mass production and Fordist industrial production and assembly lines and national markets and all these sorts of things. Um, so instead the excess profits go into financial markets where they create a period of financial expansion uh, which ends in a crash in 1929. And long depression which is only resolved when a new institutional arrangement is developed, a new institutional arrangement which is what we recognize as mass consumerism, that is mass production for mass consumption. So the New Deal in the United States, social democracy in Sweden, the outcome of the Second World War, um, the welfare state opens up a mass market for the things that mass production can make and creates a lot of a wealthy, stable, middle, working middle class that is able to afford and buy all the things can now that can be made by by industrial production, washing machines, microwave ovens, cars, television sets, etc., etc., And this leads to a period of steady economic growth, the so-called golden 25 years of capitalism, 1948 to 1973, when the crisis sort of starts all over again. No? Now, if we look at our period, uh, we can find something very, very similar in the sense that sometime in the early 1970s, a new technological wave begins to impact our society. 1971, Intel invents the microchip. 1969 is the first connection of the ARPANET, which is the origins of the internet. This first technology has its first impact not so much on the internet and Facebook, etc., but within networks of industrial production. Within the capitalist economy, in the second half of the 1970s and the 1980s, all the stuff that we now recognize as part of the collaborative economy um, co-working, uh, collaborative communities, open innovation, et cetera, et cetera, are being pioneered by multinational companies. Global supply chains are putting knowledge commons into operation, are obligating participants to take part in co-innovation processes, et cetera. Um, multinational corporations are developing co-working spaces, are energizing a collaborative knowledge economy based on common knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and this creates an enormous increase in productivity, which, um, however, can't really be absorbed by existing markets. So once again, it goes into a financial expansion. Uh, and you can see a successive number of financial booms, the real estate boom in the, the, the mergers and acquisitions boom in the 80s, the web.com boom in the 90s, the real estate boom in the 2000s, et cetera, et cetera, until everything crashes again in 2007, 2008. Um, and now we're in a situation where we don't really have a new institutional arrangement and we don't really know in which direction to go, right? Uh, so the question is, where could such a new institutional arrangement come from? Um, could the sharing economy be part of such a new institutional arrangement? Well, mm, maybe, but usually one thing to keep in mind is that new institutional arrangements that have sort of given new direction to capitalism have generally been the outcome of conflicts, large conflicts. The last new institutional arrangements came out of the Second World War, right? Um, because um, new institutional arrangements not only allow around uh, require a recomposition of elites and powers, etc., but it, it it requires uh, the ability to sort of reconnect the capitalist economy to social needs and desires in radically new ways. So the first phase, the first phase in the development of a new institutional direction, of course the composition of a new kind of political subject which is able to impose a new direction with capitalism. The problem with capitalism right now is not that it's 
not powerful enough, but that it is so powerful and so uncontested that it doesn't really know what to do with its power anymore. Right? The problem with capitalism in a certain sense is that it has won, and after it has won, it doesn't really know what to do next. Right? Um, I have no idea about uh, what such a new institutional arrangement could look like and what it would come out of, but definitely it would require a number of different dimensions. First of all, a new institutional arrangements need to open up new markets. Right? It needs to open up new markets where the enormous productive potential that digital economy and the sharing economy and collaborative economy in general is producing can somehow be put to uh, useful purposes. Right? Facebook right now has an enormous wealth of data. It gathers data on about 1.4 users, about 400 million active users, uh, which it stores uh, in its server farms, and it mainly uses that data to target advertising for shampoo and dog food, right, which is not particularly useful deployment of this enormously uh, productive research. Right? So we need to find out new markets where this type of productivity and this type of wealth can be deployed in ways where they need social needs that can generate demand and open up spaces for economic growth. A new institutional arrangement needs to be baked based on a re-socialization of finance in the sense that throughout the history of capitalism you can see uh, sort of a pendular movement where capital goes in and out of commodity markets. Usually in the beginning of a new cycle of development, capital invests in commodity market in the production setting, setting of stuff. Towards the end of a cycle, like the one we are in now, it leaves commodity market and it goes into financial markets because profit margins in commodity markets, at least not in the short run, are not as interesting as in financial markets. But the way, of course, you can target a new regime of growth and a new regime of development is based on re-socializing finance, forcing finance in some way to go back into commodity markets and provide the type of resources and investments that are presently lacking, right? Today, uh, we have an enormous amount of people who are creating startups, who are doing social enterprise, who are experimenting with the sharing economy, et cetera, et cetera, and most of them are uh, desperately cash poor in the sense that the amount of money that flows into this innovative economy is ridic ridiculously small if you compare it to the amount of money that circulates on derivatives markets, et cetera. Right? So one sort of convention that is able to re-socialize these types of liquidity flows is an essential ingredient. Um, what's this going to come out of? The, sec the last time we had the Second World War, now we're facing an ecological apocalypse, probably in the second half of this century, which will probably be able to generate a lot of the conflicts that might uh, develop uh, and become a growing ground for a similar type of new arrangements. Thank you. <laughs>